Hi everyone, my name is Andy and today I will be going over the integration between Howl's Pro and QuickBooks Online. One of the first things you'll want to do before connecting your Howl's Pro account to your QuickBooks account is come on over to QuickBooks and let's go through some important settings that need to be addressed before integrating the two. You can simply come up here to the gear in the upper right, go to Company Settings, we're first going to stop at expenses. If you have chosen to integrate purchase orders with QuickBooks Online, you'll want to make sure that purchase orders is turned on. Next, you can come down here under advanced and you'll want to make sure that everything in the automation section is turned off. Once that's done, you can go ahead and save and close out. You'll also want to come over here to the tax center, sales tax. Make sure you've set up sales tax in QuickBooks Online based on your location. We of course do have a checklist for you that we can send you so you don't have to remember all of this. It goes through all of the steps, settings, and items you need to set up and check off in QuickBooks. Next, you'll come over here and you'll go to House Pro Settings. You'll come down to integrations, and this is where you will actually connect to your QuickBooks Online account. Of course, I'm already connected, so I'm going to come over here to settings. Then you'll begin going through and mapping your House Pro account to your QuickBooks Online account. You will see House Pro default accounts created in your QuickBooks account. You're free to rename those to your actual checking, credit card accounts, or if you've already set up your bank and credit card accounts in the chart of accounts in QuickBooks, you can simply select those accounts for mapping. I'm choosing my checking account as the deposit account, which is where payments will sync over to in QuickBooks. Right here, I'm going to leave the default accounts, the House Pro Transaction Fee Charge and Transaction Fee Expense accounts. I'm changing the bill pay accounts. This is for when I pay vendors to the checking account. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave the House Pro Payable Credit Card account because that's the credit card I'd like to use to pay vendors from. Of course, if you have an American Express or City Card set up in your chart of accounts, you could choose that here from the drop-down menu. Sales tax paid to vendor is another default account we suggest leaving so you can properly track any tax you've paid to your vendors via the purchase orders in House Pro. And then your payable account down here, House Pro AP account, is simply accounts payable. You can pop over to product mapping once you've made those changes, your default settings, and saved those. Again, you will see House Pro default accounts. This is the default account uh, for product income and product cost of goods sold. If you'd like to break out any of your categories, even your custom categories, if you've set those up and have them go to their own income and cost of goods account, say accessories, you would simply create accessory income as well as accessory cost of goods sold over in QuickBooks, save those accounts, and then you'd be able to map here from the drop down. That will give you a more detailed profit and loss report, but you definitely don't have to do that. You can keep all of your products going to the same income and cost of goods accounts. Same thing goes for services. You are free to leave the defaults, change the defaults if you have other accounts you've been using or would like to use, such as service income or service costs. And then you can break out any of your service categories if you'd like to maybe track your shipping income and shipping cost of goods sold. You can set those shipping accounts up in QuickBooks and then map right here. So next, I'd like to go over to a project so you can see some of the transactions and how they'll look over on the QuickBooks side. Let's go to the Beach House. I'll go to my invoice that I have over here. So right here, you can see I have my invoice. This invoice will be showing in QuickBooks, and I have two payments, one for 2000 and one for 353.13. Once those payments have been logged in House Pro, something that's very important to note is 
When using your bank feed with QuickBooks Online, this is where your bank and or your credit card are actually connected to QuickBooks and real transactions will download in here. Uh, the point of this is to make bookkeeping a little bit easier and reduce manual entry. When you're connected with House Pro and you have payments and transactions syncing over, you want to be careful about matching and not adding. That could cause a duplicate if House Pro has already pushed transactions over. So for example, I have a deposit here from House, the Beach House, 238074. As you can see, unlike the transaction up above, which we'll get to in a minute, there is no match showing. So I'm going to go ahead and click in any one of these boxes and then click the option to find match. As you can see right here, here's two payments from the Beach House. Now these payments were made the same day, so they were lump sum deposited into my bank account, creating this large deposit here. You can simply check off your two payments and match. Now let's say you have absorbed the online processing fee and not charged it back to your client. You can see there's a difference right here. So you can simply click this resolve button, plug in the customer name, categorize to bank charges and fees, and it's a really simple way to offset your online processing fee without having to add extra entries into QuickBooks. Go ahead and click Save, and now you've matched that transaction. Let's pop over to Purchase Orders. So as you can see here, I have a purchase order for Crate and Barrel. So I'm going to go ahead and log a payment on here. You can put in all your pertinent information, payment method, reference number, and payment date, and then click Create. What that will do is create not only a vendor bill, but a corresponding bill payment against that bill in QuickBooks. And of course, as you can see here, here's the bill payment, which is coming up as an exact match to the money spent that downloaded from my bank feed. Go ahead and just click match and you're all done. For any transactions such as cell phone bills, meals and entertainment, payroll transactions that don't pertain to House Pro, you'll want to go ahead and just categorize, plug in your vendor name, and go ahead and add. So the most important thing with the bank feed is House Pro payments out and payments received need to be matched. Anything that doesn't pertain to House Pro, such as overhead transactions, payroll, meals, and entertainment, can go ahead and be categorized and matched in QuickBooks. The biggest rule with House Pro integration to QuickBooks Online is to make sure that any edits you need to make, any uh, deleting of payments or line items, uh, any updates that need to happen to documents or payments in House Pro happen in House Pro. Uh, we don't want you to edit an invoice or delete a payment on the QuickBooks side as that will cause a syncing issue. Any updates made on the House Pro side will update QuickBooks accordingly. You also want to avoid making anything inactive in QuickBooks. So please don't deactivate services or products or customers, even vendors. Anything like that uh, deactivated on the QuickBooks side would again cause syncing issues from the House Pro side. Of course, we are all here, um, QuickBooks Online experts with House Pro that can assist you with your integration, assist your bookkeeper. We always recommend that you get your bookkeeper on board, have them watch this video, reach out if you have any follow-up questions. We're more than happy to walk you through mapping send you that checklist that I was talking about and make your integration a much better experience. Thank you so much.